Today on Clergy Corner, we're going to discuss Hollywood's portrayal of clergy. Is Hollywood fair on their depiction? Stay tuned and find out what our area clergy think. Good day, Livingston, and welcome to Clergy Corner. Hi, I am Dan Martian, pastor at the Presbyterian Church of Livingston and your host. Please welcome to our show, Reverend Dr. Richard Bossler from Grace Lutheran Church. <laughs> Rabbi Faith Joy Dantowitz, Temple Ben Abraham. <laughs> Appearing for the first time on the show is Father Joseph Laracy, from St. Philomena's Roman Catholic Church. <laughs> Reverend Susan Gillespie from the Trinity Covenant Church. Ron D. Pasquale, Reverend Ron D. Pasquale from the Full Gospel Church. And Reverend Elizabeth Wig Maxwell from St. Peter's Episcopal Church. During the National Night Out event in August, I interviewed some people about Hollywood's portrayal of clergy and what their thought was. This is what they said. I am here at National Night Out asking people about what they feel is Hollywood's depiction of clergy. I think sometimes they try to go to one extreme or the other when they're depicting clergy either as very corrupt or very kind of maybe goofy and not, not to be taken too seriously. Um, I think at least with the West Sussex Tribune that we have been, I think um, at least the movies and the TV shows that I've watched, maybe it's just the ones I gravitate toward are favorable toward the clergy. Um, I can't really think of any off the top of my head that, that hasn't been. I've seen some shows that depict uh, the clergy in a beautiful way and most appropriate uh, to what my knowledge is of you know those particular religions. I think that Hollywood uses clergy as a plot device to move the story along and oftentimes use them for the humor, the levity, and makes kind of a buffoon out of them and don't really depict them the way they really are. The media usually uh, depicts them in a very, emphasizes anything bad that they are doing, you know, and that never anything about all the good works. I think they make them very superfluous, that somebody just lead out there doing their job but not really affecting people the way they do. I think that they emphasize and they they try to get a lot in about uh, the negative, the, uh, the, the things happening to the priests, the things happening to the pastors, and I think that they put such emphasis on that that they don't put the positive things in. They just, uh, they're too busy interviewing people and victims of the negative aspect of the religious uh, um, community. Do you have a favorite clergy character? Yes, Father Mulcahy from MASH. Why? Because he was the right level of humor and seriousness and care and concern. And he was probably one of the most balanced clergy depicted in Hollywood in my mind's eye. I like Pat O'Brien. What did Pat O'Brien play? He played a priest in a lot of the movies with James Cagney. Enemy number one in the 30s. Uh, Billy Graham. TV clergy person? Uh, well, Bing and, you know, the Bells of St. Mary's was, was very good. I'm not real good at that, but uh, I would say Spencer Tracy. Pat O'Brien, he played in a lot of, uh, you know, was a priest in many of the movies, and they were so good, and they were, it was a good storyline, and I felt they were, like, based on reality. Thanks to uh, Frank Sheehan for helping out to edit that uh, wonderful interviews that we did with the folks around the community. Um, what do you think, Sue, about what the people said? Well, you know, I think it's encouraging that it seems like they wanted there to be positive depictions of the clergy. I'm, I'm glad to hear that they feel like clergy are positive people and they'd like to see more of them. 
it's a little discouraging that the only ones they can think of go back 40 years or longer. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I agree with them, I guess. <laughs> what are some of the more modern ones that have been depicted oh. by Hollywood? Oh, I don't know. Are the media in general? Yeah, I, well, I don't know that there are very many positive ones in, in more recent days, but I, I think that uh, probably clicks along with the cultural misunderstanding what clergy are about anyway. So, yeah. What's interesting is that, well, the Roman Catholic, Joel, it was really interesting how that the iconicness of the Roman Catholic with Father Mulcahy and yeah. Spencer Tracy and some of them uh, have been, you know, mentioned. But what, Faith Joy, what about the rabbis, the rabbi clergy? in the media or in Hollywood. How has that been depicted? Well, I think um, looking at a lot of TV shows, you'll see any clergy are just there to kind of move things along. So if it's a life cycle, then maybe a rabbi will appear because you need a rabbi there for the wedding. You'll hear the breaking of the glass, and then you go back to whatever the people of the main characters are doing. So not focused on so much. Um, and in, in the movies, often you'll get rabbis who are I thought the person, I don't know who the person was who said it from the summer of the, the night out, just saying that they portray them in, in silly ways. It's hard to often see a rabbi portrayed in, in TV or film as somebody that you could get to know or that could make your life more meaningful or help you get closer to God or just learn about your religion. So it's, it's often seen in that way. But there are, there are a few films and, and some shows that have come out in more recent years that maybe have a, a, a rabbi that would be an interesting character as well. So. When there is a clergy that is depicted in media and also in Hollywood, what do you pay attention to, Elizabeth? Well, um, I pay attention to whether it's a man or a woman, for one thing. Okay. Uh, and we don't, sorry? Yeah, I was going to ask you, what do you think is the balance there between the man and the woman <laughs> clergy? Well, I think as you heard from the folks who were uh, talking at, at the night out, um, we don't see a lot of women. Uh, as clergy um, and uh, portrayed. Um, so uh, it's hard to think of very many of them, and it seemed like most of the folks were hard pressed to come up with somebody as well. So Yeah, it's interesting that nobody picked out the figure of Hitler that is an Anglican. <laughs> and in your favorites? Well, I, it, she came to mind when I, uh, when, I, when, when I was thinking about the topic. So. Um, and, and, you know, there, there's a wide variety of opinions about the, the portrayal of that as well, because Dawn French, who portrayed um, Geraldine Granger, who's the vicar, um, is a comedian. So it was really kind of, in a sense, a vehicle for her. But, uh, but on the other hand, we got to see a woman uh, priest, a, a woman vicar, and she was the head of her own church and not an assistant. And, um, and uh, she, the show was really around her. And, um, and, and we saw her as a real human being, which is something that we don't, you know, she, she's, she's multi-dimensional, very much so in that, in that uh, BBC show. Of course, that was, I think, recorded about 20 years ago, so. Um, but, um, so she's a full human being, and then her congregation is this sort of interesting group of um, unusual people, but on the other hand, there's this sense of how, how much she loves them mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, is, is devoted to them. In, in all their, um, uh, you know, uh, quirkiness and, and individuality. Yeah, yeah. Rick, what about you? What is your favorite television, our media, our Hollywood sure. fiction of a clergy? I was, I was thinking about that, and it, it goes back a few years, but there was a show uh, with Tom Bosley and Tracy and Nelson. It was called Father Dowling, Father yeah. Dowling Mysteries. I think I that was probably one of the better ones I was thinking of. Well, why did you like Father Dowling? What was it about him? <laughs> I, I think it was... The, the fact that he brought his, I mean, yeah, he brought his faith into the, uh, into the secular world, so to speak, and just that he used his knowledge. He wasn't just a one-dimensional person. He was a multi-dimensional person in, in what he did. With me, I liked um, Gene Hack Hackman in The Poseidon Adventure. There were clergy that was depicted twice. One was a Roman Catholic priest, and then Gene Hackman, which tends to be the more Protestant, but he was a rebel priest. And he was the one that had the turtleneck. I was thinking about wearing a turtleneck today and <laughs> you know, because he had so much emotion and he was wrestling around. A lot of times Hollywood will depict clergy wrestling around. Some have their doubts, some have left the, you know, the clergy because of their, uh, their insecurities or because of their doubts. Well, anyway, Gene Hackman playing in the Poseidon Adventure, he, he was really wrestling around, but he led the people to safety to the hull of the ship that was above the, uh, the water line. 
And then there was this one portion where he gave his very life because there was steam that was trapping the folks in and they couldn't move forward. And so he jumped onto the valve, it was a big valve, and started turning the valve, but he didn't have enough energy to get back to the platform. He gave his very life, he sacrificed. And so when I look at clergy now being depicted by Hollywood or the media, is what is it they're trying to depict? Yes, and I think you have actually put your finger on it. I think um, Hollywood or television are very uncomfortable with the thought that there's anybody who actually believes this stuff. So they're believes what? So what what clergy believe? So mm -hmm. they like to depict clergy as being conflicted uh, or being corrupt or perhaps being very very charitable human beings despite their doubts that kind of thing. The very idea that somebody really believes and really follows the God they believe in is almost impossible for them to actually try to portray. Yeah, right. yeah you know, it's interesting you say that because several years ago uh, there was a, a TV show, I think it was LA Law, but I'm not 100% sure, where the Hollywood, the uh, producers came out and said, we are going to have, introduce a new character and she's going to be a born again Christian and she's actually going to be positive. It's going to be a positive person. It's going to be positive about her faith. And this was like huge news that the <laughs> person was going to be a born again Christian and was going to be a positive character. Yeah. You really yeah, don't see much of that today. No. <laughs> it, it's just not newsworthy or it's not. Yeah. How many clergy are in the news nowadays that spin off on the positiveness? You know, we have people, uh, clergy, that are in the news that either do criminal action or, uh, or scandalous activity or, you know, they, they are rebel rousers. Mm -hmm. The one that does come to mind is, and I think he's a prophet in his own time, is Reverend Al Sharpton. But listening to Reverend Al Sharpton is sort of a rebel rouser. Prophet in his own time or prophet in his own mind? <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole other topic. I think you're only going to go there. That's, that's, yeah. that's, yeah. that's, yeah. that's yeah. not, that's yeah. not Hollywood in too deep. Yeah. 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 But uh, yes, absolutely. So it's, uh, are we, you know, we just don't make the news if we're in a uh, great limelight. And you know, great. I've noticed that um, Wrong. we have, um, Hollywood has their agenda. Their agenda is to be as creative mm. as possible with, with going over the ledge and then when they do they go over it anyway. So that's why you've seen all everything there. For clergy we, if I could use that term, we, we have an agenda. We, we have a purpose why we're here. That, that purpose doesn't mix the Hollywood agenda. So you're always fighting that so the, the idea of, of us being creative just doesn't work in their mind. It's, the steady thing. So that's why sometimes I believe they just kind of put us over the edge. And well, don't Ron, just how, how does that make you feel? Not to be a psychoanalyst <laughs> or anything like that. Oh, it, oh. It's, it's very disturbing. I, 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 I like how Rick, uh, Pastor Vossler said that about when something good does happen, all of a sudden it's like, oh, you're kidding, that's about, it, that's going to happen? It's, it's, um, it's so funny. I know an, an uproar came um, in, in circles with the movie Nova that just came out. Mm -hmm. um, because of, of the fact it was termed, at least what we promote as, as a true biblical depiction, and then you get this thing about, well, they're gonna change this, and change this, and change that, and, and then it was going from a true biblical per, uh, interpretation to, well, we took a lot of liberties in the thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, you know, again, you, there's the creativity that, that comes through, and it, it, you don't wanna be deceived, but let's face it, at times it is deceiving for us. It seems like over the decades, the uh, portrayal of clergy has changed from uh, likable to uh, what we have nowadays, maybe scandalous or you know, uh, trying to get people for the money. Why do you think this whole change has occurred? Uh, Joe, what do you think? Well, I think Hollywood, it? Yeah, Hollywood influences culture tremendously, and culture also influences Hollywood. So there's a feedback there. And what we've observed very much, certainly over the last 50 years, is that culture, Western culture, has been drifting away from the Judeo-Christian foundations on which it was founded. And so, not surprisingly, there's this gap that the, value, the values of Hollywood don't reflect the values of, of clergy and, and of uh, Jews and Christians in the United States who practice their faith. Is there a way that we can get that back? I think, you know, to, to use a... Um, 
a Christian term evangelization is something that uh, is something that can help culture to refi refine its its foundations. Um, and uh, you know, for example, one of our our deepest convictions is the the dignity of human life. And when we can encourage that in our culture, that that has an effect uh, in people's thoughts, words, actions, etc. So I think we can have an impact. Yeah. Well, uh, one thing I was going to say is, is uh, I don't mind if Hollywood shows clergy as human, human beings with real things. There was a movie out many years ago uh, called Signs, and it was a science fiction movie with Mel Gibson as a, as a uh, as a pastor. And what it showed is his his doubt because of the loss of his wife and how he had to come to grips to actually at the end of the movie, um, actually having a a you know a rebirth, if you will that he could go on and actually do the job that God called him to do. That's real in everybody's life. It doesn't matter whether you uh, are clergy or, or, or not. Uh, so I don't mind that clergy are depicted as, depicted as human in our doubts of what's there. You just don't want to go to the end of, uh, you know, being this false clown, if you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rick. I say, uh, taking on what you, both of you were saying, you know, how, does, how do we in general influence Hollywood? Part of it is through our through our box where we're you know Absolutely. the movies that we're watching, and I think there was a an art wasn't there an article about that where that the uh, that more uh, Christian or more religious uh, movies they're starting to make some money, mm. and yes. Hollywood is understanding that. Yeah, and it's right across the line. It's just not only the Christian religion, but it's also oh. the Jewish religion all the and all the yes. other religions that are out there that uh, you know the clergy are depicted with. And um, but I, I, yeah. No, I was going to go back to um, what you mentioned before about depicting clergy as real. So you, you had asked us to think about some of our favorite shows or favorite movies. And one movie that I remember really enjoying, and I didn't have time to rewatch it just now, but um, looking at clips, Keeping the Faith. I don't know if you saw that movie a few years back. Keeping the Faith is about oh, a, yes. a rabbi and a priest and a, and oh, a, yes, and a young remember. woman. And they were yeah. three childhood best friends right, and right. didn't oh. see each other for many years. And the two men, one became a priest, one became a rabbi. Mm -hmm. And the woman reappeared in their lives about 20 years later. And, um, th and she wasn't Jewish. And the rabbi ended up, they ended up falling in love with each other. So it's the, the real challenge of human relations, seeing the rabbi do well in his pulpit, seeing him as a real person, but also as an effective rabbi, and seeing the mm -hmm. priest as an effective priest, that mm -hmm. they, they were passionate about their faith, and this friend of theirs really liked that about each of them, that, that faith mattered to both of them, and um, the challenges with the priest, that, that he chose to be a priest and wasn't going to be able to get married, and his own challenges in the movie, that he was attracted to this woman from childhood, but the fact that the rabbi was also attracted to her, and it's a wonder, it's a, just a fun movie to see in terms of showing the clergy as real people that you can relate to, that that make religion exciting. I think part of it is when the media depicts, the media or Holly depicts clergy as not real or just kind of silly, mm -hmm. it's like, don't you want to show that there's something meaningful in religion? And so by showing a movie right. like that, it, it does. There's actually one other TV show that I just power watched before today's episode so I could know something about it. It's called Transparent. I don't know if you've heard about it. I think it's on Amazon. It's one of those um, TV shows they prepared all 10 episodes and you can watch them. And there's a rabbi in it, a female rabbi. So I was particularly excited to, to watch that and see it. And she's depicted as a, as a real person so you can relate to her, see that she's an effective rabbi and strong in her role as a rabbi and counseling a family and then the challenges, a lot of challenges that come up in both the movie Keeping the Faith and in this show of being a single rabbi in the, in the, in the rabbinate and, and or a single clergy that's dating, the challenges of that and people, how they try to date you or not date you, but just seeing that as, as a real example. And then one other film I wanted to mention I, if you have to pick a favorite film, I guess this would be my favorite film because my husband has a cameo role in it, so it's kind of fun. Wow. It's <laughs> called Certainty, and it was an independent film with Loudon Wainwright a few years ago, and it's about a priest, and it's about um, the premarital counseling, how they go off to the retreat. What's, what's it called? Pre-Cana. The Pre-Cana. Yeah. They go off for a weekend retreat, and it's with all these couples trying to explore their relationships, and the priest seems like just like a really down-to-earth priest, and the way he relates to the couples and helps them just bridge the gap of their differences and their understandings and their connection to one another and to their faith. It just, it's very heartwarming to see like a, a priest depicted well in a film and to find, I found that it was a meaningful film as a rabbi to think about in the counseling perspective as well. So I, I, I enjoyed that one as well too, so. It's interesting looking at the uh, energy or feeling the energy and looking at the smiles around the table here. It seems like uh, throughout the decades, 
from what Hollywood used to depict uh, clergy as, as now the clergy are to be be, uh, being depicted as approachable, Sometimes. as passionate. <laughs> uh, a lot of the humanist is coming through. And it's interesting that Hollywood would put the clergy in there to say, yeah, the, we all have our doubts, we all have our scares, we all have our questions. And the clergy, with wrestling around with that and wrestling around with the people, I, I think that in many, many ways, that's where the media in Hollywood is starting to go. And it's starting to catch up on the passion of the clergy. And uh, it's, it's really interesting to, to see how, where people really go ahead and they, they, they connect with the humanness and the human side of clergy that deal with God and how to, their faith <coughs> informs them and the ways that they, they solve issues within their life. I think when you talked a little bit before about could we go back to a day when clergy were more implicitly trusted, I don't, I don't know that we can mm -hmm. because I think institutions are not trusted anymore. So it's, it's not just the church or the, mm -hmm. the synagogue, but you know, government of all kinds and that kind of thing. I think we'll go forward into being more trustworthy, but it won't be about institutions. So it's about the people connecting people with yeah, their faith and, and with their religion? Yeah, and I think that's why you're seeing that now reflected in media, it's a more of a personal connection than right. an institutional one, which right. means you don't come automatically as a trustworthy mm -hmm. being just because you that. have an institutional imprimatur, you have to earn the trust. Now we have Faith Joy, Sue, and Elizabeth, women clergy, on the show today, and what have you seen as far as the women clergy? Um, are the people accepting of the women in the role of clergy? Because it used to be a really male-dominated uh, profession. Now it's opened up to the women. Have you seen uh, a change in how people are looking at that? Saying yes. You're talking about in the media. In the media and Hollywood. Well, that's, that's why I was mentioning that that show, Transparent, where it's a female rabbi. So I think that they were very accepting of that. So. Mm -hmm. And the mainstream things. The only time I see women clergy, they're the one doing the wedding, and they're literally a prop. You know, they never. You don't hear them say a word. So mm -hmm. I, I don't feel like we're really represented quite yet. Yeah, Elizabeth, what do you think? Um, well, I think of all the possibilities. Um, <laughs> it's, it's uh, you know, um, be, because I, I think in some ways women represent a whole different facet. We're, we're people who had to kind of um, uh, break into the institution, if you will. So where men are, I think, more often identified with the institution because that's been going on for a long time and we're relative newcomers, if you will. And so um, uh, it's, um, it's, it's kind of unfortunate that that can't be a part of it. We, we sort of stand outside the institution now. So, so you know, the, the um, depicting us, uh, maybe that's why we don't get seen as often right. is because we're not really the, inst we don't represent the institution mm -hmm. in many ways. Well, when you ask somebody to picture what a rabbi looks like, right. Right. what's the image that they Right, what, what does my faith look like? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. that kind of thing. You see, you see more of the male imagery. Yeah. Yep. I'm in the uh, studio audience right now. We'll be asking questions <coughs> or uh, answering questions from the studio audience. But one question I have for us uh, on the panel is uh, who's leading who? Is Hollywood, are the media leading the way that society is looking at clergy? I have, the reason why I ask is there are some weddings that I do and they say, this is the way I want the wedding to be, and what you know we think you should do or say. Well, they get that from Hollywood, yeah. and I'm going. Well, that's not really what we do. Have you <laughs> had found that out? Yeah, Leah, I would say to that is you, you look at the amount of people, especially the younger generation that go to church or synagogue, compared to those that go to the movie theater. You'll see that there's a huge difference. So, sadly, I think. Hollywood's kind of steering a little bit more than, than what we would believe, and that does need to change because it's a, just a false perception. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm here in the audience. Uh, the audience member, yes, what is your name? Steve Delman. What is your question? We're going back all the way to the days of Elma Gantry, which you missed. How do you feel about the TV ministry shows? With, with each blessing comes a fundraising pitch. <laughs> Do you find those offensive? 
Yes, Sue, you're <laughs> shaking your head. Yes. Yes, what? yes. Would you like to verbalize your shaking of your head? I believe that Jesus was sort of uh, into throwing <laughs> those people out of the temple. You know, that, would, that was, uh, I, I, I don't know exactly how we became as accepting of that as a culture as we are, because it just denies everything about our faith. I, I, you know, I get the impression you're not a fan either, and I'm not. I'm not <laughs> Faith, joy, what would you I don't you watch say? those shows. Um. <laughs> <laughs> is there another question for our clergy? What is your name? Abby Meinhard. And I was just wondering, how do the young people in today's world see these shows with the clergy? Are they as interested as we are in seeing the TV shows? And, and how do they really, what do you think they f really feel when they see these shows? Ron, would you like to cover sure. that? Start uh, us out. Well, having three children myself <laughs> and having them growing up in church, I, I would say that um, I, I don't know if it's as important to this generation as it was in prior generations. Um, I would go along the lines of the fact that they may think it's more just if they're needed in a scene, they're there, um, which is sad to say because you would see that. But yeah, I, I really think that's that's a slope that that it's just going down and down, and I I, I don't like it, and I, I hope that would change by some of the things that have been even you know hopefully represented. But yeah, I see that definitely happening where it's just not becoming that much of an issue. Uh, Father Laracy, uh, as far as the popularity of the Pope, it seems like the younger people are gravitating toward that. What are your thoughts on this question? Yeah, I think uh, as clergy, there are things that we can do maybe to connect people with positive uh, role models among, among the clergy. We have our, our Holy Father, Pope Francis now, uh, who's really making a very concerted effort to reach out to the youth. Uh, and maybe to encourage those who aren't practicing their faith to get back into that. Uh, but even us here in Livingston, we can do things like maybe just directing members of our congregation to some of the classic films that portray clergy uh, in a positive light, in an authentic way. I'm thinking of films like On the Waterfront, uh, where Father Barry is the, is the brave priest that's willing to take on the mob to help mm -hmm. his parishioners yeah. who are being exploited working on the docks. And uh, those, those heroic images can, I, I think, do, do a lot to, to undo some of the negative stereotypes. Yeah, Rick. Yeah, I would say that they're, they're all, you can almost say that there are two different classes of, of films. You can also look at, I mean, we're looking at the ones, focusing on the ones where you're talking about clergy specifically. But what about the ones in general where there is a spiritual aspect or a spiritual understanding or a, um, when it doesn't, isn't necessarily a clergy person mm -hmm. in it, exactly. but there is a, a positive message. And I'm thinking there, uh, the series Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe, where there's a positive message. Or you're talking about some of the other different um, programs, different things where there is a positive and even a, sometimes a spiritual uh, message to it. Okay, we have one more question. Would you, what is your name? Marilyn Rosenbaum. And what is your question? It's really a statement and a question. I didn't hear anything that was positive that a clergy association could address a particular problem. For instance, you, um, one of the topics that wasn't discussed today was the role of the, um, on television in the soap operas. If you were ever, as I was many years ago, a very avid soap opera watcher, uh, clergy are depicted in very, very various ways. Mm -hmm. And I think that an association can do something if they really would get together and get after the television industry and change an image. I think, I think it's possible, because I believe people can do things. Amen. Amen to that. Well, thank you so much for being with us, and thank you so much, friends, for being on the panel today. Let's give them a hand of applause. audience. Until we meet again, may God's love be with you.